Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 series PLC Modbus ASCII protocol. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So. Uh, Modbus protocol basically comes in three different types. Ethernet, which is Modbus TCP, or Serial, which is Modbus RTU, or Modbus ASCII. Now Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU come standard protocols in the Productivity series of PLCs. Now today what we're going to do is connect the Productivity 1000 PLC to a solo process temperature controller. Now this will be done through the Modbus ASCII protocol over RS-45 communication. Um, and that RS-45 is the media that's going to connect the two together. And we're going to take the present value and set value and read them from the controller. And then we're going to set the uh, set value and we're going to write that down to the controller when a change is required. So next what we'll do is take a look at the actual hardware that we have here. And you'll see that we have our productivity, uh, the uh, P1-540, which is the productivity 1000 PLC, and it comes standard with your RS-45, we have an RS-232, and we have our Ethernet port. So we've got our RS-45 connected back to the solo process temperature controller through the RS-45 port. Now this um, Modbus, RTU, and ASCII come standard in your solo process temperature controller um, on all the standard models, not the basic ones. So we're communicating back to here. So that is our setup that we have right now. And if we take a look at the actual solo setup, the first thing we'll do is hit the set button, hit and hold, and we'll go into the actual parameters. So our J-type thermocouple that we have connected here to the solo. The uh, temperature units to C. And then what we'll do is go scroll right down to the, um, there we go. So this parameter here must be set to on. It allows us to communicate both to the software for setting up as well as to any external devices like we do here um, through our Modbus ASCII. Next we have our actual uh, communication. And in this case here, we're using ASCII. Hit again. Our unit number is going to be unit number one. So we can have multiple units on this protocol. Then our baud rate, we're going to use uh, 19,200 baud. Our length is going to be seven data bits. We're going to have an even parity. And we're going to have one stop bit. Then we're back to the back, we're right back to the beginning again. So we'll just uh, go back into the run mode. So that is our hardware and that's our setup for our solo. So we're all set there. Next, what we'll do is take a look at the program itself. And if we look under setup and hardware configuration, we'll see the local and we'll just go right to our uh, CPU unit and the serial port. Now under the serial port, you'll see the RS-45 uh, TB or terminal block style. Our port name is CPU uh, dash 45. The security same. Now our protocol is going to be set to ASCII slash custom protocol. So we're actually going to customize this um, protocol going into our, our, our solo to grab the information. And you can see we have a, a bunch of different options. Then we have uh, our baud rate. 19.2, which is the exact same as what we just saw on our solo. Our parity is even, data bits is seven, and our stop, our stop bits is one. So we have this all set up. So these must match exactly what the controller does or you will not communicate at all. So that's very important to make sure that you make note of each one of those variables. Now, in the Modbus standard, my PLC is going to be the master and the solo process temperature controller is going to be the slave. 
So that means all the communications must come from the PLC itself. So let's just close that down. Now let's just take a look at their actual program itself. And so what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to read the values, uh, present value and set value from the process temperature controller. And we do that by using an ASCII output. And the ASCII output will just strictly um, take out um, ASCII. So each character that you see here in my string that I'm sending out the port is actually ASCII um, characters. Eight bits for each character that you see there. So the L, all Modbus ASCII starts with the uh, colon. So there we go. So that indicates that, that we have a start of a message. Next is the unit number we're communicating to is 01. And then 03 is the read instruction. And next is going to be the starting address, which is in hexadecimal, which is 1000, 1000. Then the next is the number that we're going to read, which is 0002. The last two characters are actually the checksum, or in this case, what it is, it's the LRC and the LRC stands for longitudinal redundancy check so we'll talk about that just in a bit here when we actually go to calculate when we write that value to the unit so we're basically sending this out because this is a fixed constant that we're sending out then what we're receiving back and you see that we are sending it out first of all and through a number switch or through a time delay. So every time I send a command, I'm actually uh, waiting uh, 10 milliseconds before I send the next one or the first scan bit to start the communication happening. Okay. So once I send it out, then I must uh, get it back. And you'll see that I do have on my sending out termination, which is a carriage return line feed, which is OD, or OD, OA for the hex code. And that follows every Modbus ASCII command. So I send it out. Now I receive the information and I use my ASCII receive. And I come in and you can see I have um, the information I'm receiving is again, the colon does it indicate that start of the message 01 meaning it's coming from address one that we have in our controller 03 which is my read instruction next is 04 telling me the number of bytes that are coming back within the protocol for me now four because we're doing ascii is actually eight so we're doubling that each time because each character must be represented by uh, four more bits so the first number coming back is 00FA and the next one is 04D2 and then I have my LRC which is 28 and then here's my instruction here and again you can see that I'm I'm looking for my termination code ODOA and I also for both my send and receive I use the a timeout interval of one second for the first character and in the interval between the characters is 50 milliseconds. So again, we're not really concerned with the timing between the characters. However, I'm setting that up just as a, a quick um, test. So once I have the information in, and I use that by using my read after I fit, I'm not in process and I finish my read, I then have, and then when I don't have my complete, then I receive that information. Once I receive the information, then I set a timer. And this timer will allow me to then generate the next instruction I want to send out. So once we have this information, what we have to do, and it's our return Modbus information is complete. What we want to do is unpack the string. Now there's my string that's returned. And so what I do is I take the first value which is the length zero. And what this unpack will do is actually convert those values for us into 
um, a hexadecimal number. So right now we are in an ASCII, it's being returned. So I'm returning a zero first, then the next four bits I'm returning, which is zero, uh, 0103, which is my unit number and my read function number. Then I have the number of uh, bits that are actually, or bytes that are coming back for, and like we said, it's doubled. Then we have our um, present value and our set value. So each one is going into one length and we're going to take the hex number because now the value is in a hex that we must convert into a, a integer value for us. So first of all, well, let's take the raw uh, hex value. So we'll take one eight digit and each one of these re represents eight bit unsigned. So it's solo. Um, so zero zero F B is the first number we want and zero four D two is the second number. So then once we have those bits in, we can then pack them into a normal register. So our present value as we pack them in is um, we take our bits and we sort them out from our return. And we come up with the value here of 251, which is now a decimal number. So it's 25.1, which you can see on our display is actually the value that we have coming in. And we can test that out just by holding on to our probe and allowing the number to increase. And again, you will see that number increasing and jumping around a little bit, but we have now 26.7, 28. So, and you'll see as that goes along, we have to unpack each one of those bits and then interpret that information. Next, we have our set value, which is set for uh, 1,234, so which is 123.4 degrees. Right. Then again, if we want to change that, we would just do the up carol key, hit set, 123.8, 123.8. So you can see we can change it either way. Okay. Next, what we want to do is we're going to take a look at changing the set value from the PLC program. Now this gets a little more complicated because we have to deal with the LRC instruction. But you'll see it's not that bad. So first of all, we take a look at the solo change. We'll set up a variable. If it's greater than zero, that means we want to change. So we're going to copy our change value into our solo set value. Then we're going to set a bit called the solo change bit on. So next, what we're going to do is solo set value change. We're going to unpack the word that we want to change. So we'll take our solo set value and we'll unpack it. And when we do that, we're going to put it into uh, two um, hexadecimal numbers. The solo set value least significant uh, byte and the most significant byte. So this this can. This one, two, three, four converts to 04 D2. So 04 being my most significant, D2 being my least significant. Then what we have to do is then pack each of these bits into a separate eight bit um, number so that we can convert this into an ASCII equivalent value. So then we take the S val S or set value, most significant bit one and two and we just look at the first four bits of that one and then the next four bits of that one. And we do the same too with the least significant bits. Then we're gonna, we're gonna calculate our LRC number. Now our LRC number is the addition of each of the values in ask or in hex for, for all of the different numbers along. And we'll put that in. So you see right here, it is uh, 18, which is the number. Then we add our solo most significant uh, bit, which is the first two digit ASCII or hex. And then our next solo least significant bit, which is again, two, two decimals. And what we do is once we have those added, we take one and we subtract that number from it. Then, 
when we have that number, which is going to be, in our case here, FF12, what we do is we have to add one more number to it. And because we're already negative to add a number, we're going to do another negative number. So we're going to add minus one more. And then we end up with one half of this. So then we look at unpacking the word FF12, and we'll have LRC1, which is at 12, and LRC2, which is at FF. So we take the 12, which is now a LRC number that we want. Next, what we'll do is we'll pack our string. And packing our string, we'll take our source. So we're going to do, go into a unit, again, start off with a colon. Unit number one. Number six means that we're going to write a value. And we're going to write into hexadecimal location 1001. And what we're going to write is our MSB1, 2, least significant bit 1 and 2. And that will, and then we're going to put our LRC2, which is 12, and we're going to convert that into uh, ASCII. What we end up with is a value string that looks like this, which is our protocol to go ahead and write the information into the controller. So that is our value. So now let's um, let's just quickly call up our data view, and we'll go to forcible tags, and let's just call this up here, and let's just change our information here, and we'll put in um, we'll put in the value thirty, so thirty point zero, which is three hundred. Say force that, and then we'll write that into the controller. You can see automatically it goes right away into the controller so the speed is very uh, uh, good on this uh, unit. And let's just take that off there and you can see here how my value that I've changed actually changes my LRC number that I've calculated and it changes my uh, values here that I'm putting in now which is now 012C which represents my 330.0 as a temperature gauge. Then what we do is we send our ASCII output and we send our ASCII input. And once we're finished that, then what we do is reset all of our flags for our communication. And we then uh, copy zero back into our solo change to represent that we've finished that change. Then we delay another 10 milliseconds and then we start all over again. So that is the entire program of our ASCII and you see it's very straightforward. It's one of the easier protocols to actually uh, understand and implement. Again, the most important part is actually the calculation of that LRC. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free books on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the scroll, uh, description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.